I had a father come to me one day, he said, Walker, he said, I don't know whether I should be worried or not. And I said, what's the matter? He said, my daughter has a curfew at 10 o'clock. She did not come home until 7 o'clock in the morning. I said, that's not good. Well, I said, she came home with a Bible in her hand. Oh, I said, that was good. He said, it was a Gideon Bible. So that's bad. <laughs> Somebody explain it to this little group over here. <laughs> I want to show you two things that Jesus had, and let me tell you why. At, at, I, I preached to a large, large congregation. I just preached to the. Um, uh, San Diego to the Evangelism Conference, Youth Evangelism Conference, 7,000 kids. A thousand kids came forward saying, we, we want to embrace God's Word and go to all the world. And we will go within the next 12 months. I was in Orlando, Florida, 5,000 kids, another thousand came forward. Every thousand kids who come forward, guess how many make it to the mission field? Huh? Ten? One? 800. 800? No, one. One out of a thousand who come forward, sign a card, say we feel in our heart that we're supposed to go embrace God's global plan. Every thousand students that come forward on a college campus, every high school thousand, only one make it out of a thousand. Why? Why? Because of the gatekeepers. You're going to do what? Just go home and tell your parents you can go to Iraq tomorrow. Parents. Mom and dad are the greatest hindrance to missions right now. The second greatest thing is churches. You're going to do what? Who's going to pay for it? You're going to ask us for money? Oh, man. <laughs> you know? There you go. He's starting a mission. That means they're going to come begging for money for us, you know? Do you, can, I, can I share something personally with you? I've been a full time missionary for 13 years traveling the world, doing all-star ministry. I, I found it, I started to raise up the next generation of missionaries. Because we went for like 20 years in our church, no one surrendered missions, and I was broken over that. I'm a sender, I'm a mobilizer, okay? Uh, also, I, I take kids overseas, so I do missions, I send missions, I do all of it, okay? I can't divide which one I'm supposed to be in, so I just do all of them. I welcome people, I, you know, I, and, and what happened is, in the last 13 years, I've traveled the world. My budget is over a million dollars a year for the work I do overseas. I've never sent out one letter, never asked for one penny. God has taken care of every need in my life to do mission work. I can tell you a story. What are the odds of that? 100%. Okay, I'm going to tell you two stories here in a little bit about this. But I want to show you some why. Why are kids coming forward? Why did Jesus not sin? First of all, who goes to the Feast of the Passover? No, not everybody. Last 11 years, Jesus has been home with the babysitter. Now that turned 12, according to the custom of the feast, he has to go. He's a man. Okay? He's an adult. So all of a sudden, at 12 years old, he took on his adult responsibility and adult consequences. He went to Jerusalem as an adult. Guess what? Mission is your adult responsibility. If you can become a man or a woman of God in missions, you embrace your adult responsibility. <coughs> So at 12 years old, he decided to stay back on his own. So guess where he stayed at for those three days where his parents were looking at him, looking for him? Well, I don't know. There's a temple. We sleep in our church. I don't know about the temple or the synagogue back then, you know. But guess what? As a man, he has to do what? Find a place to stay. Where did he eat? I went to school in Israel, in Jerusalem, at the Center for Biblical Study of Jerusalem. Guess what? I used to eat at a place called McDavid's. <laughs> they didn't have McDonald's nor Burger King. They had McDavid's to eat hamburger, french fry, and Coke. So I used to, maybe he went to McDavid's, I don't know. But guess what? As a man at 12 years old, he was doing man things. He was listening in the temple. He was asking questions. And he was doing mano to mano, face to face, you know, with the rabbis, the leaders of his time. He was a man. Now, I don't know if you know the school system in Jesus' time, but at... Uh, from 6 to 10 years old, the, in, in Jesus' time, they went to what's called Beit Safar. That was his school. By the 10 years of age, he had memorized the first five books of the Bible word for word. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Number, Deuteronomy. All five books, every key child by the time of 10 years old had memorized all five books of the Old Testament. And then at 10 years old, then you went to join your father's business, or you went to the next, next level, uh, what's called Beit Talmud. And from 10 to 15, you memorized the rest of the Old Testament. And by the time 15 year old, you had memorized every 
verse in the Old Testament from beginning to end. So by the time he's 10 years old, he could sit in the temple and dialogue the scripture because he had memorized it word for word. Then, guess what? At the 15 years of age, he went, then went back home with his father. If he didn't do it at 10, at 15 he went back home and worked with his father. Or he went to what's called Beit Minrash, the next level of the Jewish educational system. And Beit Minrash is where you had to go out and find a private tutor, a rabbi. And what happened is you look for a rabbi that had a certain teaching. Every rabbi, there were many rabbis, and each rabbi had a certain set of teaching, and that rabbi was called their yoke. And you look for a rabbi who yoke you want to take on. So you interview with the rabbis. So, hey, you know what? I've just graduated from Beit, you know, Talmud. I know the Old Testament. I've been studying the things of God. I want to become part of you. And guess what? The rabbi would say, you know what? You know, Greg, you love God. You love the scripture and everything. But I don't think you can know what I know or do what I do. So go home, be a godly man, take on your father's business, raise godly children. And he would say to you, no. But Greg, you know what? If he wanted you to follow him and become one of his disciples, guess what the rabbi would say to you? He would say, come, follow me. And that was the official invitation for you to become his disciple. And all of a sudden, you know what? He'd say to you, Greg, I believe you can take on my yoke. You can do what I do and know what I know and become like me. Where did Jesus find his disciples at? Fishing. Why were they fishing? They flunk. They were the rejects. <coughs> okay, what were the biggest complaint about them? They were unlearned men. They haven't been to Beit Talmud. They don't know anything. You know, they're stupid. And when Jesus came to them and said, come follow me, guess what they did? They immediately dropped their net and followed him. Why? Because here, here's a rabbi who believed I could do what he do and know what he knows. Guess what? Jesus believes in you. I, you know, to a, to a special education student, when I learn that Jesus believed in me, that I can know what he knows and do what he does, in fact, he told them they'll even do greater things than the rabbi did. You know what that means to me? He believes in me. He believes in me. And he believes in you. Greg, he believes in you. He believes you can do what he does. I tell you what, that's news to me, you know. And yet the world says, guess what? Walker's unlearned. He's a special education student. Don't go into anything. Use verbal skills. And all my life, the world told me I can't do anything. And I read a verse. Guess what? I could do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Now, Jesus went to Jerusalem as an adult. When did he become an adult in America? When? 18, when? 21, when? Take on adult responsibility, adult consequences? 35? <laughs> you know what the answer is? We don't know. This is what happened. We created a thing called adolescence. Do you know where the teenager, the word teenager was not coined until 1941, April edition of Popular Science Magazine? Okay. Before 1941, there was no such thing as teenagers or adolescents. He was a child, all of a sudden, you know, Waltons. Remember that TV show, The Walton? When John Boy start planting corn, <laughs> he took on adult responsibility as soon as he can. You know, God never called you to raise up children. He called you to raise up responsible adults. You have children, but you don't raise children. You raise them to be adult. And what happened is that we have created say, you know what the legal, you know what the age, you know what the definition for adolescent is now? The true legal, nine to 26. How be old before you have to be before you start renting a car? You go rent a car. 25. When does the guy's insurance go down? 25. Why? Because they say you're an adolescent until you're 25 years of age. Wall Street Magazine and also Time front page a month ago says, guess what? They won't grow up. And what we've created now is we have the adult adolescent. And they won't take on their, you know, there's movies come out like Failure to Launch. Guess what? Because we have adults who, who don't take on responsibility for their life. Can mom and dad still pay the bill, put gas in the car, and I'm working on my doctor's degree. <laughs> I have children, but my mom and dad are taking care of the children and paying the bill for my house because I'm not responsible for my own life. I'm not taking on my con And guess what? That's filtered to the kingdom of God. And all of a sudden, guess what? We've got men and women growing up in the body of Christ, and they won't take on their adult responsibility. This is what I do, okay? I, I want you to know what my ministry is. 
We do not have adolescent all-star ministry. I have 13-year-old adults, and kids come to me, 13, 14, 15, college students come to me and say, Walker, I want to lay down my adolescent and take on my adult responsibility. If you say that to me, I'll take you on the mission field. If you want to live like this, I will not take you. That's why I take kids at 14 years of age, throw them out there to preach, and they take on their adult responsibility for the kingdom of God. And I got 14-year-old, 15-year-old, 17-year-old who are handling $10,000 bills. They're going from one country to another country, and they are taking on the adult responsibility. And God has raised up a new generation of teenagers who said, guess what? I lay my adolescent down. Because Jesus was never a teenager, I don't want to be a teenager. I want to become a capable, responsible adult for the kingdom of God. Amen. Okay? Now, I just wrote 70,000 words on that for Thomas Nelson. There's a new book coming out, okay? Uh, called Rite of Passage Parenting. The four things every child is missing. Jesus had a rite of passage, became a man, took on his man responsibility, and he was able to stay back in Jerusalem on his own and take care of himself. How many 12 year old boys do you know can you throw in a city and take care of himself now? Let me tell you the second thing that Jesus had. He had called a significant task. Significant task, if you don't do it, a large number of people suffer. If John Boy did not plant the corn, what happened to his family? Is that a significant task? If you don't do it, a large number of people suffer. If Ben didn't chop the wood, what would happen? Cool. Okay, if I said this in Kansas City of the night, if Mary Ellen didn't milk the cow, what would happen? And this young man goes, explode? <laughs> well, no, it quit giving milk to a calf again, okay? So, you know, everybody in agricultural society has significant tasks. So what happened, we have what's called pseudo-significant tasks. Also, we created things to make us look important, but we're not important. Guess what all school activities are? Pseudo-significant pseudo I play football. I'm a cheerleader. And it happens like in second grade, you know. I'm a cheerleader for a little team. Go pee wee football. You know, that kind of stuff. We create a pseudo-significant task. We have no real significant task. Jesus at 12 years age had a significant task. If he wasn't in his father's house that day, he'd been out of God's will. What do you call me out of God's will? Yes. What's disobedient? Give me another word for it. Sin. Okay, now say it like an evangelist. Sin. He would have sinned if he had not been in the temple that day. Okay. See, I can do the black preaching if you don't know that. Yeah, figure that. He would have sinned that day. And he had sinned that day. <laughs> Guess what happened? There would have been no Savior for the world. And there had been no Savior for the world. Guess what happened? There would have been no salvation. Everybody from Adam and Eve to the last person in the world would have died and gone to hell if a little boy did not go to the temple that day in his father's will. So guess what? Jesus had to get up that day. Do I go to church today or do I let the whole world go to hell? <laughs> Jesus at 12 years age had a rite of passage. He was a man and he was about his father business significant task.